A flurry of new polling from the all-important swing states today. All these polls were just released today. In Colorado, President Obama up by four. In Iowa, President Obama up by four. In Wisconsin, President Obama up by seven points. In New Hampshire, the president leading by six points in one poll, leading by one point in another. In Ohio, President Obama leading by two points in one poll and by three points in another poll. In Virginia, President Obama leading by one point. In Florida, President Obama leading by two points. One state that is not a swing state this year, but that President Obama made into a swing state in 2008, is the great state of Indiana. That year, Indiana flipped from red to blue in the presidential contest. President Obama is not necessarily expected to pull off that same thing this year in Indiana. But this year, there is a really hot race in Indiana in the Senate. After a Tea Party primary cost longtime Republican Senator Richard Lugar his Senate job, the Republican candidate in Indiana ended up being the guy on the left side of your screen, Richard Murdoch. And he's up against a centrist, moderate Democrat named Joe Donnelly. He's the guy on the right side of your screen. Since Mr. Murdoch said that when women are raped and become pregnant as a result of that rape, that is something God intended since he, remade, he, he made those remarks at a debate a few weeks ago, in very, 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 very red state Indiana, the Republican candidate, Richard Murdoch, is now behind in that state's Senate race. He's now losing that race by double digits. Here's the interesting thing about that poll, though. It's a poll in Indiana, which almost never happens. It's really weird, but nobody nationally ever really knows what's going on in Indiana politics because they don't really poll in Indiana, at least not that much. In Indiana, it is illegal to make automated calls for telemarketing purposes and for public opinion surveys like polling. You can't use an auto dialing device unless one, the subscriber has consented to being contacted. Yeah, right. Or two, a live operator, uh, live operator gets right on the line and gets consent that way. And since that makes traditional polling hard and expensive, there is very little polling in Indiana. It's kind of a weird detail about this election, right? But while we are on the subject of weird details, check out this ballot in North Carolina. North Carolina is one of more than a dozen states where they have straight ticket voting. So that's where you say, all right, everybody with an R next to their name or everybody with a D next to their name, I'm, that, that's who I'm voting for. I want all the Republicans or I want all the Democrats. But there is a bizarre catch to straight ticket voting in North Carolina. North Carolina is the only state where voting for a straight ticket does not include the presidential race. So you have to vote for the straight ticket, and then in addition to that, you also have to cast another vote for president. If you just vote straight ticket Democratic, you do not cast a vote for Barack Obama for president. Counterintuitive, right? But you have to do that separately, in addition. So it's not really straight ticket voting, it's straight ticket plus the president voting. Okay, I said weird details. Here's something even weirder. Vermont. This is Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin. He is a Democrat. He is the hands-down favorite to win the most votes in the governor's race this year, in the sense that he leads in the polls right now by more than 30 points. But that may not be enough. The Vermont state constitution requires a candidate for governor to get 50% plus one vote. And even though Governor Shumlin is leading by 30 points, he has four opponents. And so if those four opponents get a combined 50% of the vote between them, Governor Shumlin will not be reelected no matter how big the margin he wins by. In that case, with nobody getting 50%, it would be the state legislature that would get to pick the next governor of Vermont. That could happen. It has happened very recently. Some of the most interesting still undecided races from yesterday's elections are for the governor's seats. This afternoon, NBC News declaring Peter Shumlin the winner in Vermont, Vermont's first Democratic governor in eight years. What's interesting about that is that even though Peter Shumlin, the Democrat, won, he did not get 50 percent of the vote. Under Vermont state rules, that means technically the legislature picks who wins the race. That's how we got elected in the first place. Two months after that, the Vermont legislature did what Vermonters had already done. They picked Peter Shumlin to be governor. The final vote in the legislature was 145 to 28, which means 28 people in the Vermont legislature voted to elect somebody who the people of Vermont did not vote for. A gentle reminder that states run elections, not the federal government. Elections are sometimes messy and governed by weird rules, but they are always fun and worth whatever effort it takes. Even if that effort this year includes filling out two bubbles, two of them, two. I'm looking at you, North Carolina.